Now, when it comes to icons, things don't get much bigger, quite literally, than the Range Rover. Now, 51 years on since Land Rover revolutionized the off-roader market, they've introduced this, the new fifth generation car. Now, coming up now is everything you need to know about it. But before we dive into all the details, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you've got a comment, then drop it below. The Range Rover. And it's not an exaggeration to say it's an icon. It was born on the farm, but now it's all about tiaras, diamonds and heads of states. Where the Range Rover has been, all others have followed. But in recent years, its position as arguably the best car in the world has been under threat. What with Bentley arriving with the Bentayga, Rolls-Royce with its Cullinan and of course the constant headache of the S-Class Mercedes-Benz. What Land Rover needed to do was to reassert the Range Rover's pomp and attitude. This is the result. Now amazingly, it's only the fifth new Range Rover since the original launched back in 1970, and it's completely new. New body, new interior, new platform, and some new engines. The fourth generation Range Rover of 2012, the outgoing car, was a big change from the L322 third generation car. Now this Range Rover is far more evolutionary. The grille and LED headlights that look like cut glass may be new, but they're still the same upright and very formal front end. Inside profile, there's still the same three hallmark design lines, the falling roof line, the strong waistline and the rising sill line. What with the short front overhang and boat tail like rear overhang, there's still that classic Range Rover look of it appearing to sweep down the road. But it's at the back where you're going to really be able to tell this is a new car. That gloss black panel hides elegant hidden until lit rear lights and I think it makes the Range Rover look really, really futuristic. Well, I don't think it gets close to the design and the functionality of the L322 Range Rover, which I happen to think had the best interior of any car ever. But just like the outside, there's a simplicity to the design that makes the Range Rover so refreshingly different from other big, brash German SUVs. The fit and finish is fantastic, there's a large 13 inch touchscreen, you can have an eco-friendly wool blend interior if you want, and the air vents always remain straight and level no matter which direction they're facing. Now in terms of tech, there's too much to mention. My highlights are automatically opening and closing doors, air suspension that reads the road ahead to give the perfect wafty ride comfort, and the ability to manoeuvre the car in and out of tight parking spaces by using your smartphone. Now, for the first time ever, you can get a seven-seat version of the Range Rover. Now, Land Rover didn't actually want to make a seven-seater version of this car, but markets have dictated it. The States, for example, have been crying out for a Range Rover with seven seats in it. And you may have noticed this car, we've got the event seating, which means that you can just elegantly sit here and watch the horse racing or anything you like. But in terms of premiumness, there's something better that I can show you. Now, if you thought the seven-seater with its event seating was the pinnacle of luxury, it wasn't. This is it. It's the new Range Rover SV. And I mean, would you just look at this interior? Now, it's available as two models, the Serenity, it's the car we've got here, or as the Intrepid, a bit more of a driver-focused version. And if you thought the previous Range Rover 
had a wonderful interior, then, I mean, this just moves things up to a notch. You've got these individual rear seats. You've got two 13.1 inch screens. A table rises out. You've even got a fridge. And look at these cushions. Don't you just love cushions? But um, I'm actually going to have a bit of a nap. So would you mind just going away? That's it. Right. Go on. Keep going. Out of shot. That's it. Thank you very much. Ah. Well, of course it can. The Range Rover might be a luxury yacht on wheels these days, but it can still get down and dirty when it needs to. The Terrain Response 2 system gives fantastic off-road capability, and you can dive into the system and set the car up yourself if you want to, or just like most people, you can just press the auto button and the car will sort itself out. It can also ford up to 900 millimeters of water and there's an active locking rear differential. In most situations, the Range Rover is in permanent four-wheel drive mode, but when on the road and between speeds of 21 and 100 miles an hour, it slips into two-wheel drive mode to improve fuel consumption. Ah, yes there is. Now the new Range Rover is built on a totally brand new platform called MLA Flex. It's been designed to offer electric power from the outset, so you'll be able to choose between two plug-in hybrids that give an electric range of up to 50 miles. And then, coming in 2024, will be a full electric Range Rover. More about that soon. Well, firstly, you might not want a hybrid or a full electric Range Rover. The good news is there's a range of 3-litre straight-six petrols and diesels, but topping the range is, yup, a V8. Now, a Range Rover wouldn't be a Range Rover without a V8, would it? Now, it's not Land Rover's thundering old 5-litre supercharged unit. Instead, it's a BMW-sourced 4.4-litre twin-turbo packing 522 brake horsepower. Mmm. What else? Well, the new Range Rover comes in standard and long wheelbase forms. It comes as a 4, a 5 or as a 7-seater. Trims include SE, HSE, Autobiography and First Edition, and I would bet the SE will be more than suitable. Prices start at £94,400 for the standard wheelbase D300 diesel, to over £137,000 for the V8 petrol First Edition. And as for the SV, well, if you need to ask... Finally, I'll be driving the new Range Rover early next year. In the meantime, leave your questions below. Thanks for watching.